All right, let's get started then. Welcome back. That is not what I was expecting because I forgot to save it. Hold on. <laughs> Yay! It's not a captain's table without it without a uh, without without some errors. No yeah, just slightly, just slightly. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, turn off the streaming the the share stream. So you, I'm still doing my video, but um, that way it's it's less less murder on my machine. Uh, mm -hmm. Welcome back to our 24-hour captain's table, raising money for Doctors Without Borders, Medicans Sans Frontier. I cannot speak uh, French, so I do not know how to how to say that. Um, but we've raised over six hundred and fifty dollars, uh, six hundred and eighty dollars. We had mm. um, Aliyah and Gotten who d d donated twenty dollars, and Isogen who d d donated ten dollars, and then we had Citizen Shenanigans who donated fifty dollars, and No No who did donated twenty dollars. So. Helping good good cause, helping doctors out borders. Uh, with that being said, let's get started on discussions or well, introductions. I keep wanting to go jump into this. Let's introduce people. Let's start from 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 that side of the, at this time. Fast Cart, who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen? Where can they find you? Well, I'm Fast Cart, also known as FC. Call me either or. Type it's just fastest to type FC in chat. No, go FC. Uh, I'm a member of Soul Citizen. I Beautiful color, yeah, they're calling you beautiful again, um, b below me. And um, you can find me on Twitter, on twitter.com, forward slash fast, underscore cart. I mostly retweet people. I don't really produce content, but yeah, I'm mostly on Soul Citizen on Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern. On, and on Thursday, I'm um, 10 p.m. Eastern for Soul Talk. And that's our community talk show. Y'all should be watching that anyways. If you're watching... If you like Captain's Table, you should watch Soul Citizens. Like that's just that's just it's just it's just Captain's Table, but you know, better. Yeah, we just know we, we <laughs> just stole your idea. That's all we do. <laughs> it's like Captain Table, except more urban. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. That's probably about right. Well, it's it it has it has uh, is fast black Jurassic Park cart himself, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, on it. Jurassic yeah. World. That's what it was. Jurassic, Jurassic World. World, right. It was, it was just with Black Jurassic. Mr. Black Jurassic himself is on there. So, yep. and, and that's, also, a, I'll, that, that's a star citizen, that's a citizen or captain's table joke, even. That That is. So. Yep, it is. Yeah. And I just, I just want to say that I, I, I know you had the, the three of us here, but I'm the one wearing red shirt, so I'm the one who shouldn't last 15 minutes. If I last beyond 15 <laughs> minutes, it'd be a miracle. It'd be a miracle. Um, all right, and then we've got Mr. Griffin Gaming RPG. Who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen? Where can they find you? Uh, I'm Griffin Gaming RPG. Uh, I'm a member of Test Squadron, Test Squadron, Best Squadron. Uh, I'm also the producer of The Soul Citizens. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's what I do. And of course, I enjoy Star Citizen and enjoy being on Paul's show and, and definitely enjoying uh, his effort today uh, to you. raise money for doctors without borders so. and thank you thank you for that that twenty dollar uh or that fifty dollar donation there griffin Hi. and then ionic donated 20 and then pete's favorite redeemer <laughs> oh, somehow my name is pete now um yeah we gotta get you over uh, a thousand we're gonna get you over a thousand in the next hour so you guys you come on pop it up get them there exclamation point msf in chat to get that link so um and um i say i i think Griffin, you're one of the oldest, uh, not oldest, I didn't mean like that. Uh, <laughs> you, I, still you, right. Uh, <laughs> it's like, still right. Go ahead. I, I think I've known you one of the, you're one of the longest, the, the people I've known the longest and met personally in Star Citizen. Because I think you and I were at the 2016 Citizen Con. Mm -hmm. It's like you and Fastcart, I think, were the, were the, were the, are the <laughs> longest ones. You know? Yeah. I've known yeah. you for seven, eight years now, as he, it feels yeah. like. So, and yeah. I've... I've met you at pretty much every US based Citizen Con type event since then, too. So. Yeah, we were at VerseCon together and, Verse and Citizen Con. Yeah. And yeah, 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 true. Yeah. Wow. This is. This is like your y'all's like fifteenth appearance on the captain's table too. <laughs> so y'all are grizzled veterans by now. Yeah, um, man, we're still stealing material am, too, so don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> steal away. I am the newbie steal. here. <laughs> steal, steal absolutely away. Just take everything, you know. Um. 
Uh, bad style. Thank you for that hundred dollar donation. That's good. Here we go. Uh, We're almost there. Where are you at now? What are you at now? Uh, Eight hundred and seventy dollars. Come on, gang. A thousand dollars. Come on. We can do it. We can kick him off with a thousand bucks, gang. Oh yeah, so, that's easy. Twenty four hours of effort. You guys got to drop it in. Come on. Space Tomato. Who are you? What are you doing, Star Citizen? And where can they find you? I am a tomato. I make Star Citizen videos. I stream Star Citizen content, and I talk about Star Citizen things. Uh, that happens here on Twitch, on YouTube, on podcasts, anywhere. Just search Space Tomato everywhere you go. But yeah, I, I uh, sometimes I come on and hang out with Paul on his show here. Sometimes I head over to Griffin and Fastcart show, hang out with Soul Citizens. Um, just make my way around wherever somebody wants to listen to me yap. But yeah, I, I just make Star Citizen stuff, mostly some other stuff, some other games. But uh, I like sci-fi things. I'm I'm interested in in Infinite when it comes out. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. I, you're hearing the you're hearing the gospel about it. You're hearing the yeah, good news. I'm hearing the good news. <laughs> I'm hearing the good news. I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for it to fully come out so I can play the campaign. Because I, I like mm-hmm. with every with every Halo game, I gotta play the campaign first, and then I'll enjoy yeah. it. See if I can enjoy the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. And that's the one thing we don't really know about yet either. It's like yeah, we've seen a lot of multiplayer, but we don't know how the campaign's gonna be. So <clears> yeah. it's exciting. It's good stuff. Um, thank you for that twenty dollars and on, and thank you for that thirty dollars, uh, Lauren. Um, and and on gave twenty dollars and said Argo Cargo. I like that. Um, so we're at nine hundred and twenty dollars. So we're only what, eighty bucks away. Oh, from, we're gonna from do 1, it. We're gonna do so, it. Yeah, we're gonna do it before be... it even gets it warmed up. That's great. No problem. Thanks, guys. Before Thank conversation guys. even starts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's fifty dollars from no, no, Nummos. So <laughs> yep, we're at nine seventy. So here we go. Come on, we can uh, do it. We can do this. Yeah. Yeah. And there's thirty dollars from Admiral Cruz now hitting that one, one thousand right there. Way to go, community! Well awesome. done, go. well done. Awesome. Now, now we're going to 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 uh, we've we've managed to buy Doctors Without Borders and Id- Idris. Now we gotta we gotta buy them a a, <laughs> Legatus, Legatus. a goddess pack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that that we'll we'll give away the um I'll give away the Avenger after. During the question and answer, so I'll, I'll set that up later. So we're still giving away that one one under eye right now, all throughout this one. So um, multiple Apollos, yes. Uh, all right, so let's get started on just discussions on CitizenCon. Tato, since you're the last one to introduce yourself, goods and bads of CitizenCon. <sighs> you, can't, you can't ask me a question like that. That's huge, dude. That's why. That's that's the show. That's the oh my show. Gosh. <laughs> So I'm getting through 24 hours. Can we start in like a section? How about, (laughs) uh, okay, I'll I'll, I'll start talking about the gameplay section because I think that was the most interesting. Um, God, there's so much. So overall, I don't, I haven't had enough time to digest it myself. I've only seen it the first time when I was streaming it, I was very distracted because there were just a lot of things going on in the stream. Mm -hmm. Um, So I didn't get to watch it really that well live. And then I watched it again last night for the first time. I want to watch it again before I really settle into what I think about it. But as far as that gameplay section itself goes, I liked what I saw. I did. And I like what they were going for. Mm-hmm. That's, I'm, I'm trying to be really careful with that wording because I think a lot of people, myself included, were a little bit drawn, taken aback by how little they actually showed. But... As I said in my video, the whole point of, of, of CitizenCon should be for them to show us something restrained, something that's more in line with what we're going to see in the next year. But mm. we know without a shadow of a doubt that there were things that are well into development that are right around the corner that they didn't include in, in yesterday's demo. Um, and that it's not, it's not necessarily that I feel they didn't show enough. It's that I feel like there were things there that they didn't show for whatever reason. I don't know if they just didn't want too many things in there to, you know, avoid that. Um, do you want to get that donation? Oh, was that a I donation? Up. I think. Uh, I, 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 I I, I'm looking at a uh, hundred dollars from Lady Grace and fifty dollars from Kodak Gaming. Thank you. So we're at one thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, to- taller yes, dropping ten dollars. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> But shout out and shout out to Lady Grace, by the way. She's actually a nurse in real life, and she's oh, over nice. one of the biggest medical yeah. orgs in Star Citizen. Um, so yeah, they're 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 really serious. They got their endeavors. They're ready to go. So cool. shout out to her. Awesome, awesome. Well, yeah, I was just saying. Um, uh, there, yeah, there are things that they so like. I have some notes. I have a couple things. Mm-hmm. 
uh, from the monthly report. This came out two days before the demo, right? They mm -hmm. were talking about, where was it? New interactivity with usables and the fact that we should be expecting to see new door interaction very soon. That was a direct quote on the monthly report. And I'm not mad at all that they didn't put these things in there. I'm, I'm, I'm not at all trying to express anger <laughs> mm -hmm. that these things weren't in there or even frustration, to be honest, more just confusion. Um, those aren't things that need to be shown off, but I feel like they really do build on the strength of Star Citizen. And that is this immense detail that they spent yesterday going so much into in all the panels, but then things like door interactions or new ai behaviors or that new dealer that they keep talking about or the mm -hmm. great cool multi-tool reloading that they said was working in the last month report new idle animations like there there were a lot of things that they've specifically told us in the monthly report have been being developed month after month after month and it's like if there's a good time to show those things working together now is then i don't want to see it in an isc i mean isc would be a cool time to see it but citizen con should be a time when they bring all those things they show us in isc that they're doing in these little lab and these weird little things, bring them all together into that gameplay and let us see what we can expect in a year. I don't think what we saw is going to be what we're going to see in a year. I think what we're going to see in a year is going to be better than that. Okay. So you, so you, th you think like what we saw was more of a like monthly progress report sort of thing rather than like, like a sprint report almost. Uh, yeah, I, th to be honest, I would have expected that last year. Okay. Um, I think what they showed us was a toned down version of what the game is going to end up becoming in the next year. Because like I said, there are clearly features that they're working on and that they've told us are working that they didn't put in there. So uh, it, it'll, it'll definitely come up at some point in between now and the next Citizen Con. As for the rest of the talk, to be honest, the panels, I think should have been broken up with more actual gameplay to show what they were talking about. We spent a lot of time looking at faces, which makes sense when it's live, but not so much when it's pre-recorded. Yeah. But I'll get into that for the most part. I feel like I've been talking a long time, but I wanted to talk mainly about that gameplay demo first and okay. then move on to other stuff later. Okay. So was there anything, so, so your goods and bads of the gameplay demo is that it was like what we're getting, but well, also like... Goods wise, good, yeah, goods. It was it was incredibly detailed. It felt mm -hmm. like a really solid piece of gameplay. It it felt like a like one thing that I especially noticed when they were landing was the ship felt like it had weight. And I don't know if that was VFX. I don't know if it was audio effects. I don't know what it was, but the, it looked a lot better when the ship was coming in to land at the place. Um, I liked what we did see in terms of AI on the ground and in, in in their navigation. I liked that we saw a what looked like a little bit of a cleaner interface for buying things from NPCs rather than just from kiosks. I like that they were building on some of the detail of Pyro and really expanding on this idea of bringing in a new system. And uh, I liked that they showed us off some beautiful clouds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I can't get past the fact that if they took away the location, I wouldn't have been that impressed. That's, I think it's fair. Um, trying to fit fits this round so so it's like it good but also could have been better is your, your kind of your kind of takeaway at least initially yeah i yeah that's again i'm trying i'm not trying to say i'm mad about it because i don't cig isn't often in a position where they could they they could get screwed no matter what they do people would be mad at them no matter what they do and i want to fully say that i am on board with what they did yesterday with their demo with the gameplay demo i think mm -hmm. that was a solid restrained like good look at what we can expect in the next year okay but uh but you but, you yeah. also you also think that it's actually less than what we're actually going to see next year yeah i do yeah okay griffin uh your thoughts goods and bads wow goods and bads uh the good was that we had one this year because i was really disappointed that we didn't do a digital one last year so mm -hmm. i'm i was happy that they did do one um, I think everyone kind of, it, it, was, it was kind of laid out in, in an interesting way. Uh, I expected it to kind of build as it went toward the end, but it seemed like it was more like early at the beginning, a lot of what we wanted to see, the eye candy, and then it got into the technical. And the technical was good. I, there were some people who really, I'm sure, enjoyed a lot of what was shared. Um, the server meshing, definitely, I enjoyed that. 
Um, I w- I'm not a brain surgeon enough to deal with that whole Gen 12 Vulcan thing. I mean, mm-hmm. it was great when they were talking about it, but once they started showing like these different schematics, I'm like, oh my God, it's too much. Um, and Tony Z section was good. Uh, I enjoyed that. I'm still listening to that today, in fact, for the second time to try to absorb it because like Tomato, yeah. it was rough trying to take everything in yesterday. Um, the, the good was that we had one this year. Uh, I agree with Tomato 100% that there w- were some things that we know that have been on the roadmap. And, and it's funny, we had the Bar Citizen on Friday and Jake said something to us that was really kind of a sobering statement. He said that when you see things on the progress tracker, and if you see them, like, let's say it says it's going to go from um, May to June or May to July. He says, when you see it into July, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's finished, that mm-hmm. it may be just finished with that particular thing, that maybe there's another division or section that needs to continue working on it. He says, so don't treat that as things are completely done. He said, they may be, but then again, they may not be. So I agree. Um, th- uh, my probably only disappointment was that I was hoping that they were going to close the new medical loop introducing something like the Apollo. Um, I felt that with the changes coming up with the red and the hospitals coming up, and maybe we will see that soon, uh, that if the Apollo popped up, it would be kind of a middle ground for players to be able to uh, interact with as far as health and the downstate and all the good stuff that's coming up. Um, it was also nice that they did do a patch launch. There was a 50-50 on that. We know that, we know that they like to announce that they're going to, you know, a patch is available for the community. And, uh, from earlier reports from folks, it seemed like the patch wasn't completely there, but we got in yesterday. Uh, I played for several hours yesterday, had very little issues. Some people I know had some crashes, 30Ks, but the new stuff that's there is fun and interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, I won't go into too much depth too, because there's a lot of stuff I need to, I need to, there's so much stuff I need to soak in again. But um, for it to be a digital event, well-produced, uh, a lot of talking head stuff, but that was kind of expected to a certain degree. And again, CitizenCon is 50% CIG and 50% the community. And that's what mm-hmm. was missing, not being able to connect with people. It's still difficult. Discord is great, but um, what really makes it is when you're able to get together with people and hang out. So, yeah, that's it. Fast card, goods and bads. For the good, I'm going to need some help. So I'm going to call it a friend real quick. So hold on. <laughs> Band new must up man! He was literally in tears yesterday. He was so happy that he finally was getting this thing. He was, he literally, we were in Discord together. He just, I'm mute and I'll talk to you guys later. He just left us. <laughs> uh, that whole segment. He needed a moment. Like, he needed a moment. He needed a moment. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I came back. I had to say, I, I, I just came from, I just came back from my bunk. I, I, I'm, I'm okay now. I'm back. <laughs> no, that Benny Merchantman segment. Okay. I was. It, you, you, we can all hope for us seeing see, see a ship that we that we know and love, and you know mm. you don't want to get our hopes up too high because we if it doesn't show, we don't we we, we would we would get disappointed. That was me. So when they said the thing, Benny Merzitman, I was in the Discord chat with um Griffin and and and, and so Citizen, and we all went ooh. That's when I said yeah, I got I got I'm gonna meet myself be back later. So I, I that was my 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 good for the. For, for Citizen God. Um, also, like, uh, I agree with um, Griffin and Face Tomato. It was top heavy. They put they put most of the good stuff in the, in the beginning with the um, Life in the Verse and Ship Talk. I really enjoy Ship Talk, not not just for the band and Merchantman, but for talking about the other ships, because we got to see the 400 eye. No one mentioned that yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm surprised but Griffin, you didn't mention the 400 eye. <laughs> oh, he just said good and bad. I didn't want to go on my origin tangent right away, but I, I, I figured we're going to get to it wait, a little wait, bit. So wait, wait, wait. off. I was is, holding back. Is, is Griff? Are you are you an origin bad guy kind of a uh, bad kind of guy, or is this is this? Oh boy, be careful. Oh here. boy. My oh, here second go. my secondary character is Griffin it's Gaming L U X, as in luxury. Okay. Okay. Good. That account, is, that account is nothing but luxury ships. So, I, so just, just so what I'm know. what I'm trying to say is I need to put you and execute in a pit. And watch you just fight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, listen, can I, I, can I make I, bets on that? Can I, I make bets on this? I spit on my iPhone every time I watch him, and he starts up on that stuff about origin. So don't worry. <laughs> I, I, I'm like, ooh, I'm trying not to type anything. Ugh. I think that might be worse for you, man. <laughs> uh, all right, fast card. Anything else? For, 
but more about the good, like the, the life in the verse, we saw the clouds in the sky and we saw mm. the, the, the FPS and the mechanics and stuff like that. I can go on about that, but I, I, I like life in the verse, I like ship talk. And then at the end, I like the um, uh, stream of thought with, with Tony Z. Like, I like the, I, someone from the hour before us was talking about how the first hour was kind of boring because they were just rehashing stuff that, was, that most of us already knew. But uh, I, I agree with the point that, you know, this is this is everyone. This is someone first citizen con, so they had to yeah. rehash that stuff in order to um catch, catch everyone up, and then and and then going going with, with the new stuff. And I really like the new stuff. Now, as for the bad, the middle part was kind of you know data heavy, info heavy, talking head heavy, but I but I, I, I got to forgive them for that because um, you, you got to fill a citizen con with, with something, and something has to. Go in the middle of, of, of all the, 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 the juicy stuff, like like, like you said, like I said, you know, it was top heavy. Yeah, so top all heavy. the good stuff was at the at the beginning, and mm. yeah, that, was, that that was mostly the bad. Um. All right. Cool. I've 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 gone gone go gone over this twice already. I'm gonna be going it over. What is it? Eight sections? I'm going to be going over it eight times. <laughs> so like those who are yeah, watching this afterwards, the, the guy who's listening to this on, on his, uh, on his break, you know, um, on Monday or on Tuesday, you know, who's like, Oh, great. I can wait 24 hours of Paul Shelley and, and crew talking about star citizen. Um, this is for you. I'm sorry. You're going to hear this eight times. All right. You're, you're, you you're just, you're just going to, you're going to chuckle a little bit because I'm talking to you and you realize I'm talking, I'm calling you out. <laughs> Don't turn around. Your boss is right behind you. Just, I'm just play it cool. Because you talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the person who's listening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your wife is right behind you there, uh, Space Tomato. Just, just, just chill. <laughs> We're on our uh, morning watch. Probably next to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so my my overall thoughts. I thought I thought it was a good good for what it was trying to be but I was hoping for it to be more than it was trying to be. Um, I feel like the problem with the citizen con isn't necessarily that it was bad. It was that it was top heavy. If they had better spaced out some of the things like the, the, the intro panel is a great example of this. They had three different <laughs> things to the same mission, three different times. Why mm -hmm. wasn't there a mission at the beginning, a mission in the middle and a mission at the end? Mm hmm. The, the beginning where it's just, you know, walk up, you, 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 uh, you, you buy it and you walk out, talk a little bit. Cool. We'll see this mission again. Go we'll come back. Let's, let's, let's look a little bit about how this stuff was made and go through some of that stuff. Then, hey, by the way, we, we said there's going to be multiple ways of doing this mission. Here's the second way. And then, you know, walk up, you shoot Jim Bob in the, sh in the, in the, uh, in, in the chest and run your run, run out and hopefully you don't die. That's the, the cool. Oh, wait, we have one more attempt to continue talking and end with that, that, that like, you know, stealth sequence. Um, and you're good. Like that's, that's, that's pr pretty good. It would, it would make people go, oh, cool. There is gameplay. This, this is how they're making the gameplay, but there's gameplay in this. And this is what you should expect with Pyro. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a great example of like, they should have spaced out some of the more things. Audio is the weird one. I'm really confused about the audio panel because it didn't like it was the answer was it was 40 minutes of we have this great tool hmm. and yeah. showing maybe five minutes of that great tool. I was I just confused. I was like, yeah. is there missing footage? Like, yeah. like, <laughs> um, I mean, they had, I, they I, had to make one for they had to make one for Tony G. That's that what that was. <laughs> Like, like, it doesn't like, make I, sense because, like you're saying, they could have spaced it out and very easily taken the demo they were doing and used that to to delve deeper into the panels they were showing. There was yeah, one really right. clear point during the demo when I was rewatching it now. Like yesterday, during the stream of thought, I need to go watch system at, Systemic Gameplay again because there were I was listening to that talk, and because it was the end of the day, I was long stream, I was tired, um, there were things going on. I wasn't paying that much attention, but mm -hmm. in my, like... Sour Patch Kid rattled brain trying to stay up in my in in that long stream. I remember being bored, but every once in a while they would start talking about a subject, and suddenly I'd be like, "Oh, this sounds interesting." And one mm -hmm. of the times they did that was Reputation. Now I was watching the gameplay demo earlier uh, that they did at the beginning of the conference, 
And there was a point where they were walking into the outpost and they were talking about, oh yeah, we've done these important things with reputation and how that's going to change what goes on in the mission. And I expected them to go into that, but they just kind of said nothing. And I was like, yeah. oh, no, no, why they, not? They, they, they covered that in Tony D, I think. Right, yeah. but that's what I'm saying. Why not have that demo closer to that panel, right? Mm -hmm. Spread yeah. out in a way that it closer references that panel and allows the content to be more equally spread so that it's not as top heavy, like you said. Because another... then it would be too top heavy. They had to spread. They had to spread it to, to, to spread it out a little bit. Because yep. I mean, I, I see what you're talking about, and it, 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 in some it would make more sense in, in, in some ways. But then who would watch the, the, the second half of, of, of Citizen Con? But let me, I, let me respond to that. I think yeah. that the problem is, and this is the tough part. CIG, whether they intended it or not, has created a pattern on how what we expect to see at Citizen Con. Yeah. One of the things is the fact that we're used to Chris opening the show, mm -hmm. giving us that first taste, and at the end of the show, we get the big bang, right? I mean, it, 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 and that thread runs through the entire convention, and we didn't feel that this time because I agree with Tomato if they, if, and, and Paul. If they had taken that section that they showed with the demo, because it was two parts, if they had did one at the beginning and one at the end, I, even that would have been something. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, when I was, I was even though I was looking forward to Tony Z, I was also looking for what is the culmination of everything that we've heard today, and how do we see this close out on that? Not just like it was great mm -hmm. seeing you guys. We'll see you next year. Yeah, I was looking to see that. You know, here's the culmination of everything that we've talked about over the last eight hours, and I think mm -hmm. that's the pattern that they've set up in the past. And I think I know I've gotten used to that. I don't know about everybody else. So this was kind of a departure where, like you said, everything kind of went up to the side. And everything was good, but it just kind of went this way. It just went on the decline over time. Mm -hmm. And especially when you started getting into that heavy tech. Yeah, the heavy tech, we've had that before. Because <clears throat> usually Tony Z is in the middle somewhere when we hear yeah. that. But I, but we needed to have that ending, you know, that here's the here's the future of whatever. And, and, and I agree. I think they have to be careful because there have been complaints about sometimes they'll show us all this stuff. And then a year later, it's still not in the game. Everything yeah. they showed us yesterday, I think... I agree with you, Tomato. I think everything we saw within the year, we're going to have it. I, we've been predicting about the stuff with um, homesteads, NPCs, AI. You know, that all stuff was great to see. Um, and, I, and I didn't need to see more than that. But it's just the way it was laid out. Just something, even with Ship Talk, you know, for that to be the second one, you know, everybody's anticipating, you know, I hate to say this, but, you know, even though we try not to, we still anticipate seeing the ships. And yeah. putting that as number two, if they had put that as number five or seven, it, or yeah. seven, but it would have been a a build toward you know how this the convention was laid out. Yeah, so. yeah. and they and go ahead. They also just like the way that they presented some of the information. I think could have been more interesting. Like the uh, the audio, for instance. I don't know why. <sighs> Maybe they're not working on this stuff, but just going out into the middle of a moon, right? Let, they could have gone out into the middle of Pyro, recorded mm -hmm. 30 seconds of audio, and then shown us how they break that down with the, with the new tool, right? Not using mm -hmm. the old stuff, but yeah. The, I, mean, I got so much explanation from that tool, but because I don't know the details of that tool, I don't know how that's going to affect the game at all. Well, I, mm -hmm. like, I had, a, I had a, a, an idea I pitched earlier in the, in the, in the show, which is basically like, like you, can make, you can make anything sound like anything, right? Well, take the whale that sounds like water and then throw it against the wall and then make mm. a splash sound there. Now, let's let's drop a bomb. And, and instead of the bomb dropping, you just have uh, have a uh, have an audio clip of, of Disco Lando going boop or something like that. <laughs> like, like, just go nuts with it. Be like, we can do literally anything with this. This is Chris Roberts saying this is bullshit. Now, every time you fire the gun, it's just this is this is this is bull, 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 you know, like whatever. Like you could have had fun with it as a way of saying yeah. we can literally and just showing like, hey, drag, pull, drop, go. And because the point was like this tool is so you don't need to code it. You don't need to like mm -hmm. you don't need to you can just drag and go so you can change sound effects on the fly and you can play around with it in the in engine and in, in the environments, which is cool. But I want to hear that. Not yeah. yeah, hear them not 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 see the very sexually charged staring into each other's <laughs> eyes hungrily. <laughs> Mm. Um, you remember when they did the coil a couple of years ago, Paul? They did yeah. that. Remember, they they actually went in and showed how they were using yeah, the did. tool within that segment, and that's mm -hmm. probably what would have been nice with audio for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, I wanted to push back on on, on Griffin said a, a, a little bit. So if they put if they put everything at the end, 
Then people will be complaining that at the beginning was too boring. I mean, no, I didn't say everything. Win. No, I didn't say everything. I was just saying there was enough stuff at the beginning that they could have taken. Like that demo was two parts, and I'm just yeah. saying, like you know, how Chris always opens up with the first part. He gets us introduced mm -hmm. into the story, and at the end, we kind of see how it wraps up. And I'm saying they could have done that oh, with, okay. the two, with the two versions of that demo. They could have had the one at the beginning, and then showing how they did the different approach on the second one. It would have been something to look forward to, but that that that's all I was saying. To be honest, okay. you could go against the uh, the whole argument that people are going to miss it by just saying, screw it, just show the same footage twice. Show it once at the beginning, <laughs> show all the stuff that they did to make it happen, and then show it at the, the end and point it out yeah. again. People, mm -hmm. people in, yeah. uh, appreciate that stuff more when you yeah. can do that. Yeah. I, I'll I mean, be honest with you. I was even upset sorry. that they showed the 400 eyes early as they did. Yeah, because yeah, no, I was such a, a, I was it's, been such a, a it's been such a mythical thing. It would have been so cool for them to have held that mm -hmm. and then dropped it at the end and freaked everybody out. You know. Oh, oh and one more thing. Mm -hmm. that, that, that no, that, that, yeah, that, 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 one more thing. could have done it. Yeah, oh. the one more thing that that could have yeah. been it. The oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Paul, by the way, you got your pocket carrier. You've been calling it. I've been mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, everyone's been th congratulating me on that. I never thought of it as a pocket carrier. Everyone's calling it a pocket carrier. Well, I always well I, carrier. It's, it's nice. It's, a, it, it, it's, it's, it's nice. a it's, it's a, a pocket, pocket. pocket carrier. It's, it's a like pocket carrier. Men's jeans pocket size. Yeah. <laughs> well, why is that the pocket carrier? I, I, I keep on calling it the balcony because I, the, they kind of a balcony it, liberator. It's, it's, it's literally the ventilator. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to go over it again. But just note that I called that. And I, it surprised the shit out of me when I called that. And it surprised yeah, me so much it startled my wife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, she uh, tweeted yeah, about uh, it. So, so what, well, why deliberate a pocket carrier but not the A2 or the M2? Because it, the M2 can carry a little bit, but like it's not nearly. It's like mm. the M2 has can hold like two auroras. The um, it's like okay. tanks. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> it can hold. The, the 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 liberator hold can hold something like twenty arrows fully fully uh, folded up and and in the right <laughs> configuration. Oh, okay. Yeah. I gotta say, how'd that work? <laughs> He's, uh, if it fits, it sits. Like, Cat rules and Star Citizen. That's how that works. Just throw um, away the Idris, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I wouldn't throw away the Idris. That, Idris, that thing's got a, a, a gun right, that makes it the, go boom. You got the real gun, yeah. And you yeah. got a lot of stuff on the oh, Idris, obviously. By, by, by the way, Paul, we interrupted you. Were, were you done when you when you were describing <laughs> the thing bad? Uh, basically, what you all were talking about, which, which is which is something, a, a continuing theme was that Citizens Con is show and tell, and there was a lot of tell and not enough show. And... Um, and if, if I was to give notes on the future of CIG doing this in the future, which I don't think they'll do, but would be um, more show, less tell, work on pacing. But then again, I, I think pacing, honestly, is CIG's biggest um, struggle, not just in production, but in <sighs> gameplay design, that kind of stuff. Pacing missions, pacing, pacing, like a lot of their pacing styles either, is either too rushed or too slow. And uh, that's going to take some time for them to dial in. Um, but for what it was and knowing the restraints that they had and knowing the team that they had doing it, um, doing, doing citizen con, it, it people were like, Oh, this feels like a, like an eight hour long ISC. It's cause it's done by the ISC crew. So they're going yeah. to, they're going to film it and edit it like an ISC. That's, that's just how it for works. You. I got a question for you. I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm mixed. I feel mixed about some things. One of the things I'm mixed about is, I really appreciated seeing a lot of new faces yesterday, right? Oh, yeah. A lot of the new devs, people, some people yeah. we've never even seen before, which was great, giving them the platform. The other struggle, though, is that for many people, for lack of saying it, being on camera and public speaking is not their thing. Delivery is important, right? How do you yeah. translate information to people, <laughs> whether it be through just, you know, language that they understand or personality, all this stuff. There are certain people that work within CIG. Like, I always love when they do the, um, the, the pillars. Right. Uh -huh. when, when I hear from the people from the pillars, most of those guys, not just because of their position, but they articulate well what CIG is going and what they're trying to do. I, I wrestle a little bit because there's some friends of ours from Elite who, when they see our devs talking directly to the people, they're ecstatic about that because they say with the folks at Frontier, they don't get that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I wonder sometimes if the whole, when you say communicating and pacing, Mm -hmm. Whether they need to have somebody who moderates and kind of helps that conversation uh -huh. so that it keeps energy going. And, and if people don't understand it, say, hey, can you put that in layman's terms for the regular person out there? You know what I mean? Because that was what was missing a little bit for me yesterday, particularly with that Vulcan and Gen 12 one. 
I needed somebody to do a little bit of translating for me. I appreciated it a lot, but it was, I, I, I don't know. It's just, I don't know if it's all being communicated well when the devs, and, I, and it's nothing against them because, you know, they're getting thrown out there in front of the camera. I'm sure they want to, they ask them to do it and they'll do it. But mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody feels the same way about that. Definitely tell you what, here's what I do for you. I, I'll ask Ken Peel to do an, ang- an, an angle translator. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, can, can I just like say, what, look, look what Nomo says, like Sandy did with Chris Roberts, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah that's fair. Um, can, can I just address one thing? Um, sure. There was a, a, little, a bit of a lack of diversity among the devs. I don't know if they, that was noticeable. Like, I don't saw, as far as I can remember, one Is woman. One, woman, one mm-hmm. woman that came up, I think, yeah. One woman, and how many people are colored? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, because uh, I know CIG's, actually pretty diverse in terms of their in terms of their, mm-hmm. their staff so i i don't want to step on too many toes but it may just be also comfort like yep. who's comfortable volunteer in front for of that the camera, wants to do it because you mm-hmm. have to volunteer for it mm-hmm. so um, that's why i don't understand why people were talking so much trash about people yeah i mean like i, 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 I like forgive them casual yeah. casual comments not not stuff necessarily that i was like oh you're a bad person but like mm-hmm. okay you know make a joke and then move on stop ribbing them these are people like you were saying who don't present like they're uncomfortable in front of the camera they're talking about mm-hmm. something they love because mm-hmm. they want you to best understand it don't this give is crap their, for this it is, this yeah, is I their mean, gdc some people some you know? people can't read a teleprompter properly or yeah. don't have experience with reading teleprompter that, that, yeah. that takes practice and some mm-hmm. and a lot of them are doing it for the first time so yeah, yeah. i, I give a yeah. pass on that yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I I also and as was Chegg Chegg brought up last stream last, last section was like there was some weird editing that was going on. And no, it was. the quick the Robert zoom in. I, I think I think the editing had a lot to do, and I think and I think it honestly had to do, to do that you had like what was it six seven sections to to edit, and I'm sure they had to. I knew they were filming it all the way up until September, so yeah. if I was and Spado, you could probably feel this as well when it comes to editing. How many times have you you sat on something and went, I can make this better, I can make this better, and then you looked at the time and you're like, it's going out tomorrow, goodbye, yeah. I am not going to bother with that. <laughs> Usually it's like, oh, it should have gone out yesterday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah they, 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 they did have some weird cuts, especially with the, um, the, the, the turbulent guy, Benoit. Yeah. He, 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 he started a sentence, they cut, he, he would continue a sentence, and then cut again, and go back to the little sentence. I'm like, why did yeah. they do that? I yeah. mean, maybe people, pickups. Maybe said, um? It's pickups. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pickups. It's it's probably yeah. didn't have enough pickups for it. They didn't have enough angles or or whatever, mm-hmm. and so it was just a, they had to use what they got. Um, which is which is the reason why CitizenCon Live works because it, you forgive a little bit because it's just a panel, right? But when yeah, it's right. yeah, and, and you don't have to edit it. Whereas pre-recorded, mm. you have to edit everything, and that can take time. And I don't know how many editors they have. I think they have two, maybe three editors. Mm. That's... Three, because they have Justin and two women. Yeah, mm-hmm. from the arm. Um, yeah. So that and and as someone who does YouTube videos, and you know, I know plenty of other YouTube creators, and I know this 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 sort of this sort of feel, which is like you'll sit at you'll look at something and go, I can make this look good. And an ISC, when you have a week to do it. You have like 10 minutes to make that look good. Man, there are YouTubers who would kill to have a week to do a 10 minute yeah. video and make it look good. Yeah. Like, like f- they, they had a day at most sometimes. So uh, like that, that kind of time being a perfect, you can really spend your time to really work it, which is why ISCs, you know, good ISCs look fantastic because mm-hmm. they just really have the right gear, the right stuff to kind of work through it. But when you've got an hour plus thing, you got to go through, and maybe not enough B-roll footage. A lot of awkward cuts. <laughs> so oh, I, yeah. I have a question. It, it, it's yeah. mostly a joke, but it, it's a question. So how many of the forty-two org commercials were better than some of the some of the uh, cut that they did in in, in, in in the panel? Mm-hmm. And they were like, well, yeah, it was quite a different a few, team. Quite a few that were good. The commercials were good. Yeah, the, commercials the commercials are, are the commercials are different. That's done by a completely different team, though. That's the yeah. marketing yeah, yeah, yeah. team. I mean, yeah, you know? yeah, I mean, about the, about the community, the community, community ones. Stuff. Oh, the, the community, community commercials. Mm-hmm. Oh, of, I mean, Haskaha and the Arts and Crafts team. Mm-hmm. The, of course. The, mm-hmm. the, the, of the, course. Of course mm-hmm. uh, the, the, um, the, the Garden Interstellar Initiative, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> was just, yeah. mwah. Um, I, I, I need to, I hope the CID puts a cut of all of them in, in, in one video. Because I, yeah. I, 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 I need that. They were good. 
Um, I, 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 I felt bad because I was going to do something like that for one of my shows that I'm going to be doing in the future. I was going to put that up there. I was like, oh, I'm going to get ready to do that. And then that YouTuber thing happened where I had other things to do and that just happened. <laughs> didn't, just didn't happen. Um, yeah. so. Oh, by the way, the other thing too, that was good was disco. The, the yeah. breaks with him were good. Yeah, that was good. They were enjoyable. Fantastic. I feel bad because I was talking over him and he made a tweet about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, oh. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> oh, I was trying to like, I was trying to do so many things yesterday and not talk over the panels. I didn't know when else to talk. Yeah. Uh, next time, Disco, don't worry. We, we will invite you to the Soul Citizen and um, Marsh Wong party. How about that? Yes. <laughs> All right. Did you guys, when did you guys talk? Did you not talk over? <laughs> we, didn't no, no, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't do we anything. Didn't we, were, we were taking a break because we had the bar citizen the day before this today, and then our show tonight. We were like, "Nah, we got to." Yeah, I got you. That would have been so too we, much. Yeah. We, we tuned in <laughs> on other folks, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have fun rewatching and seeing his parts. Yeah, it's gonna be good to go through that. Uh, at yeah. least, at least going through his. I'd like a big supercut of his parts. CIG yeah, media yeah, team. Yeah. A super cut of. Good. Yeah. So we need two super cuts one of Disco Lando and one of the uh, community commercial. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's go over the, the, the big question the, the, the big ships in the room. Um, <laughs> the, the three ships they talked about. Like, I, th I think um, we'll go over one more because I think y'all probably have more to say about, like, We'll go. We'll do this, and then we'll go with like one thing that surprised you, or like one thing you, that really stuck with you, and from like one panel or whatever that came out of it. That's not the the life in the verse panel because I think we've already done that to death. Uh, <laughs> um, so let's start with you, Fast Cart. Um, of the three ships, what are your initial thoughts? Try to keep it brief. Other than the band, other than screaming because Banu Merchantman. Oh, <laughs> I, I have a thing on the button, man. I have a thing on the button. Uh, no, I. I I can go on about the Brandon Merchant, but let me cover it. I almost said Valkyrie again, the Liberator. I have an M2. Um, I'm not really looking to change the, from the M2 to the um, Liberator, because I mean, the Liberator is more like a, uh, I don't see it fitting into my fleet. Even though it carried more than the M2 has 400 cargo, uh, you're going to need more protection. And that's mm. that really something like, I don't, I don't see that being agile and limbo and getting away from people who trying to catch you. The, the M2 is, uh, is probably going to be easier to get away from trouble if you get into trouble. Um, what was it? The 400 I? Um, yeah, I, I have an Aquila and the Aquila, uh, uh, how do you pronounce it? Aquila? Aquila? I, I, I say Aquila. Ask, ask Darsh. He'll, he'll tell you. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I, I have one and it has a Ursa and a Snump Fighter, the um, P-52. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the 400 I seems like a, a bit of a downgrade because it can carry a X-1, mm -hmm. but you had to buy an X-1 separately. Yeah. So by, by, by the time you do all that, it's almost the same price. And, and it carries less cargo. So I'm probably going to stick, stick with my um, Aquila, but mm -hmm. I may get some CCUs for the... Um, for the 400 guys, just in case like, something happened and I changed my mind. And what was the third one? Or the, the third one was the Banu. Banu, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, man. Sc screams I... and schoolgirl? Is that, is that what, is <laughs> yeah, that what it's going to be? Yeah. Basically. Uh, yeah, um, something that surprised me. Oh, it had I, I thought the cutout, it had a, a, a med center in it. Yeah, there's so a med center. I, 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 yeah, that, that that was maybe they talk about it before, but I missed it. But yeah, that, 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 that was that was news to me. So I I I I am looking forward to that. Um, yeah, when you were muted cutting... yesterday, you missed our conversation. That's what you missed out on. See, that's what happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> by ourselves. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, seeing all the interiors of of the of, the, of the, it, 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 it looked colorful like like it has more palette than what i normally attribute star citizen to have basically uh what is it called saturated colors and stuff like that uh and it's big <laughs> it's I, it, hopefully this time they put everything in in the scale so the humans next to it next to the benny merchant look really 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 small not as not as small as they did when that 
uh, concept came out like five years ago when, when people said it's going to be capital ship size. Well, it's it's not quite capital ship size, but it is big. And yeah, I, I, I'm I don't know how I'm going to fly that thing by myself. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I've already um, asked some people in Soul Citizen for help for in, in flying that thing. <laughs> Uh, um, Griffin, thoughts on the three ships? We'll end, we'll end with a 400i because I know you, and I know you're going to want to go on that 400i <laughs> rant. Well, I'll, I'll take the same. I'll go to kind of the same order. Fast card had the Liberator. I thought was a really interesting ship. I, again, kudos to you because you had been mentioning about the need of a, a ship of some that type in game, and um, it definitely re is a, a response to people who've always talked about getting fighters across large areas of space, fuel efficiency. Blah, 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 blah. Not just pyro, but anywhere. So I think for orgs, a uh, ship like the Liberator is going to be great, uh, particularly when they're relocating their fleets um, mm -hmm. versus using something like the Kraken, you know? So I, I think it's a great ship. And of course, for combat, uh, I think it's going to be great. Uh, it's well, it's defended pretty well. The thing's got two size fives on it, if I'm not mistaken, plus some mm -hmm. other stuff on it. So I don't think that it's going to be something that people are going to target, per se. I mean, space is big. I'm, I'm always... People always talk about targeting people, but I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know if you're going to be running into people as much as people think they are. Um, so I really like the Liberator. Price point kind of makes sense. Uh, it's a specialized ship, very mm -hmm. specialized. Uh, for people who are into support, they'll be the people that will get that ship. The ones who maybe I'm not a great combat fighter, but I'm in an org, and what can I do to help? You know, mm -hmm. that I can fly this ship and get you guys where you need to go. So I, I think the ship's going to be great for that. Um, Let's jump in real quick. I, I thought five hundred dollars mm -hmm. was a great price. I was surprised it was so it was so cheap. Yeah, mm -hmm. if, yeah. I, I think Listen, it was about where it needed to be. Chat's yeah, been crucifying me for saying that it's 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 under under costed, but you know that's just me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a bang for your buck ship to me right yeah. now. Yeah, really. Where it is where it is, uh, and then we know the price is going to go up too because this is the concept price. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. The the other thing is for the BMM. Um, yeah, I mean, we've been talking about this ship for a while. Uh, very excited about seeing it. We had been saying that we believed that we were going to see it this year, be just because after the Carrick, the team had announced they were going to do a rework and redesign on it and go back and look at some old stuff. I think they did an outstanding job. One of the things that's great is that whenever CIG does do that with ships, they always seem to really elevate it and raise it up even more. So that's very promising for people like me who like the 600i uh, that's hopefully not only going to gold standard, but hopefully also getting a rework. Um, and I think it's reflected in what we saw in the 400i, and I'll elaborate when I get to the 400i. I think the uh, the BMM, for people who got it at the original price of $250, God bless you. You're getting a, you're getting a great ship. Um, and, and not just because it grew in a little bit of size, but also just the fact that the, the design and layout on the ship is really, really amazing. Uh, a lot of different areas in there. Uh, I'm just really curious to see how much of that ties into lore, uh, flying that ship into areas where there's Banu space, how they connect all the things that are supposed to be tied into that ship. And I hope they do, um, because uh, people just talk about it from trade, trade, trade. But if that ship is reflective of anything that the that the lore speaks about it, it's way more than just trade when it comes mm -hmm. to that ship. So I'm hoping that uh, that CIG builds on that. It's beautifully laid out. Love the fact, we had talked about this, Paul, a little while ago, whether they were going to create that whole thing with synergy between the Defender in the BMM. Mm -hmm. I'm oh, glad yeah. to see that they did do that. I'm so glad to see that they did that. Um, I, I always wish though that ships like the, the the BMM and for example, the Polaris had two fighters instead of one. One is okay, but two I think would be great for escort. Um, but I'm glad that they did make accommodation for that. I love the animations we saw for it. The, the introduction of letting us know that there was a lot of Xeon efforts into it. And lastly, but not leastly, it definitely is going to have this really cool alien distinct look to it. The showroom, the holograms, uh, things that are levitating, all that cool stuff that they're talking about putting into the BM, BMM, I think are just amazing. And I can't wait to see it. And then last You're but not you. least. Grim in the vapor. Yeah, I know. Getting you all worked <laughs> up again over there. Patty White, just go sweat off your forehead. I see you shining a little there. Um, so uh, last but not least, the 400i. Um, a big origin fan. Been looking forward to that ship that fits somewhere between the 300 and the 600. Uh, I wanted this to step up a little bit more than what it did. Uh, there, there's a two to three cruise ship. I was looking more for something like it was more like a more corporate jet. That's more like a Learjet. I was looking more for a Gulfstream, uh, mm -hmm. something that was more like a five person corporate type of feel. Um, even though they talked about they don't really look at this as luxury per se, it's more exploration. I do love the design. Comparatively, when I say that they've learned some things with luxury, 
uh, you can definitely see in the 400 that they have managed space much better. It's not cramped, but it's not as spacey as the 600 is. Uh, it feels a little more functional. It is a little tight to me, a little bit, but I, I wish there was a little bit more luxury room, but um, I like it. The feel of flying the ship is interesting. It feels sluggish, but that doesn't bother me. For some people, they're looking for this sleek, stealthy, not stealthy, but very highly maneuverable ship. And for me, it felt comfortable flying and like I'm not in a rush to get somewhere. And I know for a lot of people, they do want to have that feeling of speed. It does have, have that kind of look to it. The design of it, I'm, it's growing on me. Um, I still had hoped that they were going to modify that original design, which they did. There were some things that they did modify. The front landing gear has been changed a little bit, uh, but it's still kind of wonky looking. I, I kept hoping that they kept creating that design with that fin look because they were going to make that in the 890 capable to go into water. That would justify the only reason for those ships to look the way they do uh, yeah. with the front. But it's for the landing gear. Uh, and for those, my, my buddy uh, yesterday was a little upset because he was saying that he wanted to get his Knox in it. And uh, I, I informed him that it is an exclusive ship that only the X-1 can go in. And it's our way to keep the riffraff from flying in it. So anyway, that's uh, I thought I'd throw that in just for the my little origin pitch. There we go. <laughs> but, uh, the Nux fits. I thought people were getting the Nux to fit in. If they're getting it to fit, I'm they're cramming it in there. Does that yeah. devalue it? They're cramming it. Yeah, <laughs> it brings your value down. Yes, it does. Um, but no, I, 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 I like it. It's, it's an interesting layout. I'd love to see it when they, when you are getting able to get the G12 in. I did see some pictures of someone who got the tumbrel in, the bass drum, mm -hmm. the bass tumbrel, or it's the RE, and one of them was able to get in it. Mm -hmm. um, but I like it. I flew it. I enjoyed it. And I know they're going to do some tweaking with it. So, yeah. That's it. Tomato, your thoughts on the three? The, uh, which should I start? I guess I'll start with the, I'll go in the same order. I'll start with the merchant man. Um, okay. I'm going to get some hatred here. Fast car. Don't Why? kill me. <laughs> <laughs> don't kill me. But I don't really care that much about the merchant man. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, I think it, <laughs> it's got fight, all my fight, respect. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> I'm not a naysayer by any means. It's got all my respect. <laughs> I feel about the Merchant Man probably the same way I do about hmm, the Reclaimer. The Reclaimer is a really, really cool vehicle. It's an mm -hmm. awesome ship, super detailed. I love what it's made for. I think it's going to have an awesome place in the game. I just don't really care about the development of it. Uh, what we did see, though, about the Merchant Man, I think, was really impressive. The fact that they're able to take a completely different, obviously made-up culture that they've made in lore and figure out a way to extrapolate that into a bigger ship with a completely different architectural style and form than what the, the Defender would be. I think it's going to make this probably the most interesting thing that we get to experience in the game up until the point it's launched. So I'm excited for it. Because like you guys were saying, the styles, the textures, um, the little things that they've put in here are, are amazing. And the, the type of ship that it's supposed to be, I think it's something that people would probably compare to like the Privateer, the Kraken Privateer. Um, but the idea of being sort of that moving, almost like a self, uh, uh, a self-contained caravan of moving goods that you could easily give people missions to go out, get the stuff, bring it back. You buy it from them and then sell it to other people in different systems. It's just like that form of gameplay that the merchant man can bring in can also really, really change the, your ability to, uh, give out missions, not just run missions and get stuff back, but to give out missions and be a central location for trade. That's pretty cool. This is going to be a, an awesome ship, but I didn't care that much for the development, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I forgot to mention this about the VMM. Yeah, Tomato, it's okay, man. There's some people in the in the chat that say they're going to unsubscribe from you. But don't worry about it. Okay. Um, uh, I, I, I will say I'll I, change my logo to it, to the <laughs> ship, don't worry. <laughs> um, one of the things I did say when we saw it, and I, talk, I said, oh, I bet it grew, it grew. And then they talked about the hangar. I said, I bet you any money the wings are going to fold. And I thought that was kind of cool that they did yeah. that. I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was nice. And it's, and it's really nice. A lot of people in my chat were worried when they started talking about the ship that, oh, no, they like, they, they're having trouble designing it. Maybe they had to shrink it, change some major parts of it. But a lot mm -hmm. of people were really happy with how they handled it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I guess I guess they did a good job as far as Merchant Man fans are are concerned. The Liberator, I thought, was really cool. Paul could, could call on that. I, as mm -hmm. soon as I saw it, I was like, wait a second. We were talking about this like two weeks ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, 
but that was that was very surprising i think it's but, a cool ship it's a cool idea yeah. all i'm gonna say is is uh be careful because apparently cg watches my show which is for some <laughs> fucking reason don't do it john turn it off Ooh. This is okay, not a good well, time. Now, can we say that Paul really wants to see a Drake made spiritual success at a slave one or whatever yes. they changed the name of that too? Yes. So, yes. CIG, if piano. you're watching, Drake Bounty <laughs> Undership, get it to me, you know? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the Liberator is really cool. And it kind of, I guess, what they were talking about was that this is going to be important for small ships that are going across the, the big systems like Pyro. I was wondering if this was speaking towards jump gate gameplay at all like where they may be because they've got this they put the hangar in the merchant man we've got one in the 890 jump the carrick like there's a lot of ships that are starting to get these hangers for small vehicles mm -hmm. and now this comes out and i was just wondering if they're possibly considering some complications for small ships when it comes to jump point navigation or if this is mainly just for quantum distance travel but uh, i think it's a cool it's a cool ship for the idea like the idea that we're getting into these very hardcore support ships. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be interesting to see when, you know, you have a reason to use that. Yeah. And then the 400i surprised me, to be honest. I, I was surprised in how much I liked it. I was surprised first with how they revealed it. They were, I think it was um, uh, Todd Pappy was just kind of like, okay, so we're waking up here on the 400i. And I was like, well, cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. The 400i. Great. Uh, which I guess is, I think, how they did the Carrick. Mm -hmm. But, but Carrick they knew, wasn't straight to fly they didn't, But they had announced the Carrick beforehand. Like, we knew the Carrick was on the roadmap for releasing, like, at the end of the year. So it was like, yeah, they, yeah. you know, yeah. they yeah. done ship shape. So that was, that was very surprising how they did that. I like the interior, though. And I, I always talk about how I'm, I'm very hooked on the sort of, like, 40-meter range-ish around, like, the MSR freelancer sort mm -hmm. of class. Uh, but this one combined with the Corsair is kind of starting to get me to creep up a little bit. Like 80 meters might be that, that, that good sweet spot. I like what it offers. I didn't think I was going to be into it, but I do need an explorer. That's what I want to do. And I think it's going to fill a nice little niche there competing with the Corsair and the Constellation because those, those type of ships, ships from that size down to say Cutlass are going to need to be really, really popular. We need more of those. I have a question for Space Tomato. Did you get the coffee mug? Uh, <laughs> did I get the... Wait, what was it? The coffee mug. Coffee mug. <clears throat> yeah, you know, no, when, they, when you he... bought the ship, yeah, when you bought the ship, they, it was really interesting. And it's the first time I've seen it happen as much as it did yesterday. It was first by the ship. Then after the ship came up, said, oh, you could add the Origin coffee mug. And then after that, uh, and then after okay. that, it was like, oh, and you can also get this paint and blah, blah, blah. And it kept oh, and stuff. It yeah. went up like by 40 bucks by the time I was through. You oh, know, boy. they got me the origin <laughs> sucker that I am. Mm -hmm. It got me to for be all honest, that stuff. Uh, to be honest, I haven't even been to the sales pages of any of the ships yet. I don't really buy sales or ships. Uh, okay. I'm not interested in them that much. Mm -hmm. I haven't gone to look at the ships on the website yet. Oh, actually. yeah. Yeah, it was uh, when you were purchasing it out. They had this extra upselling of stuff to you. It's like, you know, oh, would you like God. some fries with that? How about a apple pie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was that type of thing, you know. Right. They're like, how they, about they, a Drake they, Bad they, sticker? They, <laughs> right. they got... They got that. They got that. Um, they got that. That impulse aisle. Uh, that that Griffin's going down. And he just he just says yes. Yeah. <laughs> they, got, yeah. they got Griffin with that. When they got Griffin, yeah. girl. I, I, I find it interesting in space when I had had like opposite reaction to to this ship. Like we 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 are on the on, on, the, on the liberator size. mostly. Yeah, we we, 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 okay, we are on the liberator. Yeah. But as far as the, as far as the 400i and the BMM, totally opposite reaction. The two extremes, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think I'm also kind of surprised that they called it the 400i. Because there's still clearly a spot for Origin to slip a ship there and to compete with, like, the, the Cutlass or the Freelancer. Mm -hmm. The uh, 300i is, is too small for that. Right, this right, is, right. This is where I make a controversial take. Uh -oh. the, 400, the 400i is not a Connie or Corsair uh, com competitive. Right, you were talking about that. Yeah, mm. it is. It is one hundred percent a cutlass freelancer dirt competitor. But then, what it, would what would the so the, the six hundred i is still the Connie competitor? No, the five hundred i would be the five hundred. I was gonna say because there's still so room for the five hundred. Ship in between the four hundred and six hundred. There's they the five hundred. They could. They surely could. He's right. right. See, uh, I don't. I going by specs that makes sense, but I feel like size is a big deal. 
And Size is a big it's deal. It's so much bigger than the, those other ships. I'm going to be is. good. I'm going to be good. I was going to say, fast car, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but th that's the thing. It's like, well, it's like the, the specs, the, the crew complement, even the, the loadout, it's entirely a, a, a Cutlass competitor because mm -hmm. it has... This, it has less cargo than a cutlass, but it has a dedicated, like, like, um, uh, what is it called? The, uh, X1, like a, like a, like a racer mm. thing. So then, you also, you'd also put a, uh, a ranger in there too. So, uh, cause the rangers kind of, are kind of compact. So it would work almost exactly like a, a cutlass because if you swap out the cargo space, you can put a, um, a, a um, uh, a cyclone in there in the cargo space, and it why, takes why up the space. Why are you blaspheming like against this ship? <laughs> well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. I'm it. not blaspheming. No, the Q and A says, well. the Q &A well. says Heretic. an X one only. The Q and A says an X one only. You can. And you fit. guys are trying to de devalue this ship by putting <laughs> well, Drake well, and Tumble stuff like to, in would this you, ship. Would you like to put, be, be, be able oh, to put God. a D twelve in there though? A D twelve, yeah, absolutely. A D twelve is not going to fit in there. I don't think it's going to fit. But, no, no, well, I, I know, but I'm just Wait. saying that, you know. <laughs> Hold on, Paul. I'm seeing in chat that it's the same length as an MSR. Yeah. 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 It's so big. It's I was surprised at the size of that thing. It's, it's big. Its size really is the same size as an MSR or a Connie, but its actual Wait, like stats means that yeah, it's about the same as a, as a constellation or as a Cuddy or a, or a Freelancer. Mm, it's a Dur. Okay. It beats they, the they, they, absolute they, shit out of the Dur. It, it, it takes the Dur to town and then beats it up for its money and then asks for, for more. Like, like it, 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 it beats up the Durr, takes its money and then goes home and fucks its wife. Like that's, that's how much it fucks it, over the Durr. The Durr went to a black neighborhood. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Fastcart. <laughs> Fastcart heard what? that there was demonetized. Yes, so he's just like, I don't care. <laughs> Wait, Paul. Paul, that makes a huge difference to me. I didn't realize. I thought it was uh, bigger uh, than uh, that. Uh, that uh, actually uh, makes uh, it uh, much more interesting to me. Uh, yeah. That was just saying. They've been saying it's a, it's a con uh, competitor, right? The whole That's time. What they've been they, they saying. said they've been saying that in the Corsair. That's what they've been saying. Yeah, yeah. but but at the same time, they also this is the same crew that that said that the uh, caterpillar was was the evil freelancer. Like, come on, mm. like like mm. they say this thing and then they and then they show yeah. like like they show all the stats and it's like this is a worse Connie, or it's a better. Cutlass or freelancer, and that's what it is. I would it's gladly a take this over a cutlass. Oh yeah, mm. this thing shits the shits all over the that's cutlass. Price, the the two fifty, like two twenty. I mean, it's that's, not. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not going to buy it. In. But that's yeah. the difference. Yeah. But that's the difference. That's, yeah. that's where the bang from the buck comes between the two. Yeah, Absolutely. I think that's. I think that's a better way of looking at it because a lot of people are like, oh, like, oh, the Corsair. It's like the Corsair is one hundred percent a better ship. It is like far it's and away Drake, a better though. ship. It's mm. Drake, but it's Drake. You you're gonna die in it. You're gonna <laughs> die, die in it, Drake. and mm -hmm. and and a stiff breeze will destroy it. Like that's that's the the thing. It's got everything, <laughs> but it's made out of out of balsa wood and paper and um. Duct tape. Uh, duct tape. And, you got some duct tape in there. <laughs> and, and, made out of PVC pipe. And it has less safety features than a, than a uh, than a um, um, than a Fiat built in 1940s. You know, uh, it's it's a death trap. Oh, man. So can we say that, it, that that the four hundred I had the luxury tax on on, on on its price? It is. It's definitely a luxury. It's a luxury medium ship. But CIG seems to be hell bent on 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 um, on promoting it as a competitor to the other bigger ships. It's like it, it would never compete. It loses in every in every factor except for it's, it's sexy. Maybe you maybe that's it, because oh. go ahead. Well, maybe they just keep coming at it from a idealistic perspective you know hey in in real life if this ship existed we would want it to be something that people were choosing based on with what they wanted to do so like if you wipe out specs which this is probably a really dumb way to look at it but if you wipe out specs and you just con consider what do people want to use these ships more maybe they're thinking okay well somebody who wants to go out exploring is that going to pick a, con a pick a constellation a corsair or a 400 i they're not going to pick a i don't know a uh, of a um, Vulcan or something yeah. of, of a similar size. So like maybe they're just thinking this is what you would choose if you were in that, if you were looking for that. Not necessarily if you were looking for specific specs, but looking for a ship for a certain thing. Yeah, but I would um, say it's a Dur competitor. It's a freelancer Dur competitor. It's, okay. it's, it fills that role for exploration. It does better than Dur. I think it has more cargo than Dur. It may, may, may not, but... Um, I think so. 
Uh, but it, that, I mean, the, the, the four hundred I only had forty two. The the, the yeah. freelancer definitely had more. Well, the freelancer has more, but then the the the, the versions like the Miss, the Dur, and the I'll Miss and the Dur have half of their their original cargo, so it's like forty mm. or something like that. So, um, and uh, the the Dur also uh, lacks the ability for carrying like a cyclone. I don't think it's big yeah. enough to carry a cyclone, but you can carry really? a cyclone. Yeah. Oh, you're all right. Yeah, 28, 28 SCU. And only has 28 SCU. SCU. So yeah, okay. so it's this thing just just takes the turn to town, the, the dirt of town. Like that's that's so, it, it is so much better. So is it kind of fitting in the middle there? Yeah, it fits. It's a, it's a right in the middle between those two sizes. It's the size is the same, but it's its functionality is for smaller. So it feels like much more of a luxury exploration ship. So what so, you're saying, Paul, is is that you're you're into it? <laughs> <sighs> All right, that's what let it me sounds go. Like I'm I'm gonna go over my 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 takes right now. I think the 400i is fine for what it does. I wouldn't buy one myself, but I can understand why people like it. I just I don't think people should be melting their corsairs for it unless you're mm, like fair. right and yeah. unless unless you have like like. Like even or even the the cut uh, the Connie's like the Connie is still going to do Agreed. better than the four hundred. It's Agreed. just that's it's not what four hundred really is is for, which is weird that CIG seems to be promoting it as as these competitors because it's like other than its size, eh? I mean everything else is worse. But if you look at it, the, no. the the ships that are just a, a degree smaller, it's like it it is hands above all all of those. Yeah, so. I wonder why they tried to I have a, frame it. I have a quick question. Listen, I, 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 I agree with Paul 100%. Don't melt your Connies. Don't melt yeah. your Corsairs. Hang on to them, because if you do, we will start moving from 1% to 2 percenters, and I really want to <laughs> remain there. So, <laughs> Oh, my God. Stay where you are. This guy's just pulling up the ladder behind him. He's like, nobody yeah. else gets this shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, a, I have a quick question, though. Do, do, like, the are the, the, the credit, credit price is 250 and just the concept of sale. Do you think it'll go above 250? I don't think so. No, I don't think it's going to go above 250 because mm. it's already released. It's not a yeah, concept. It's, it's released, a, right? It's exactly. release. So, mm -hmm. I, and I think the reason why it's 250 is because it's that sweet. Like it is, it is no, it's better not than it's a, a dirt. It's a pre-order, Paul. It's a pre-order. Yeah, well, it's going to release at 315. So, <laughs> um, uh, let, me, let me look at us up real quickly because the freelancer dirt. Freelancer. Dur. Dur. I have it up. What are you looking for? Uh, the, the original price or the price of the dirt. I'm oh, going to okay. love having conversations about these ships comparisons when real life price isn't so much a factor in that decision mm -hmm. making because I it's say so much more interesting. Yep. I want to say 125 for the door. 135. Yeah. 135. Yeah, 135 right now. So it's 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 about twice as expensive as Dur, but it has twice as many, much cargo capacity and it has more better weapons. It, it's it's a better made ship all around. And it's designed for, I mean, the only thing that Dur has is that it has its own, like, uh, refinery on board. But, right. I mean, like, there's, there's, I can almost guarantee you that this is going to be a better system, or a better ship. So it's, and it, it does better than the Dur, but it's worse than the Aquila. But it's cheaper than the Aquila. You know so, what, I hope they do something with the Dur, though, Paul, because the one thing you've got is the cartography thing on this ship, which I was yeah. surprised to see which them throw cool. in there for yeah. exploration. And I'm hoping that they step the dirt up a little bit because it needs to get, you know, it's still got those original panels and stuff in it. I'm yeah. hoping they do something with it to make uh, it step Paul, up you convinced me. I will get to 400i in the PU. Yes, it's a great ship to get in the PU. <laughs> yeah, I would, yeah. I would, I would, I would hands down buy this thing as a as a progression for for an explorer. Like mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I, it would, it would be a tough one to go if you're an explorer to go from say like a 315 or mm -hmm. that kind of range or like or like a terrapin. To going to the next step up, it's like, do you want to buy the dirt or do you want to save a little, you save up a little bit more money and get yourself a four hundred i? It's like, yeah, I yeah. will definitely progress through this ship. Yeah, this is whenever, this is whenever I'm, yeah, I, I this is going to be game. a little bit more. I think it's going to be a lot more because it's electric. I mean, you're talking about UEC pricing, but still, I don't think it'll be a little bit more than than than, than, than oh, I think it'll be twice as expensive. Be. Like, like currently in game, you can buy the dirt for about two million. I would, I would expect okay. the the 400 i to be three million mm. you know wow that'd be yeah. nice i yeah. for some reason i was thinking more how much is the msr in game um mm. look it up let me look it up at oracle 
By the way, Chad, I'm enjoying this conversation because we've talked about the 400i more than any of the other ships so far. Yeah. <laughs> right it's it's fi it's five million. The MSR is that five million. I would expect this to be more we than We can that. always go back to the no. conversion, man. We can always no. go back to the conversion, man. This is, there's no way this is going to be more expensive than the MSR. Does the MSR have more uh, cargo? Oh, yeah. 114 SEU. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 yeah see, I don't know. Versus, versus I don't know ship specs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I have it up in, in front of me. That's the reason why I'm, <laughs> I'm able to do it. Um, so, yeah. So, we'll see. Uh, Banner Merchantman, me, me and Fastcart are part of that original crew, that OG crew that bought it right away. We, um, yeah. Um, and, and as all true, as, as I'm going to do a no, no true Scotsman um, fallacy, but as all true Benny Merchantman owners would say, we understand why people don't like the best ship in the verse. It's okay to not like the best ship in the verse. <laughs> not They're everyone's wrong. going, That's fine. you That's left fine. me out. I, I had, <laughs> wait a minute. I bought mine at 250 and yeah. then, and then I had it in melt and we did a giveaway. What was it when we got? What was it for our hundred or fiftieth show? What yeah. was it? We did some giveaway, and I gave it away. I but then yeah. Fastcart was nice enough. No, but Fastcart was nice enough. He had another one in his melt, and so I ended up getting it from him. So that was very wow. helpful. I still, I still got it at the two fifty price. Thank goodness. So I'm very uh, happy. And that's for my third account, by the way, Paul. That's all my alien ships in that account. <laughs> okay. All alien ships in the third account. Um, I. <laughs> The, 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 the reason why the Banu Merchantman is the best ship in the game is because it can hold ha like like a dozen uh, car, uh, whole seas. Or not whole seas. Um, 1,880 uh, MPVUs. And, and MPVUs. Seas. It's uh, Argo Cargos. It can hold like a dozen oh cargos. Argo Cargos. And that's, how we, that's how we measure value. That is how we measure value in this house. Okay, sir? In my house, we measure value by how many Argo Cargos can that carry? Um, <laughs> I'm being quiet, Tomato. I'm gonna let them chest beat now for the BMM because I was on the origin. I got my origin time in, so I'll let them chest beat for a little bit. I don't. I don't have a horse in this race. I'm just. Uh, I'm a spectator here. I. I the thing I'm. I, I like the the. Th I didn't actually pay attention to a lot of banding merchant and stuff. I just said, you know what? I'm glad that they're finally telling us all of this stuff after six years of telling us nothing. Um. Well. Yeah, they they did have they did have that one con concept out that came up like three or four years ago. But yeah, yeah. actually, that's a good point. Yeah, because I was thinking I was actually yeah as as Bandu Merchant Man fans, mm -hmm. how did you feel about the length and what they what they went over when they were talking about it? Perfect. Yeah, yeah, Perfect. I, yeah. I was gonna say like sometimes I grouch about how long it's been taking, but now that I uh, I seen the, the new stuff out, it's worth the wait for me. Yeah, and and the length that they talked about it was fine. Like, I know a lot of people go like, oh, God, why do we have to see the concept? It's like they're making up for the six years that they decided mm -hmm. this wasn't going to be a thing. And now that they're making it a thing. True. Um, I need to go watch that section again, too. That's another one that I just don't know that well. I didn't mm -hmm. really get to pay much attention to. Um, so, um, and then the last one, which was the, uh, the Liberator. Um, I, I feel weird. I feel like I feel like Mr. Damas. <laughs> <laughs> An accidental Nostradamus, because I, I, as I've been saying over and over again, this was something I expected them to make in two years, and then you know people pointed out, Paul, this isn't coming out for another two years, and I was like, oh God, you're right. <laughs> 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 uh, I also heard some some information which may or may not be true, which is that this was an originally concepted for Squadron Forty Two. Then they decided not to go with it for Squadron Forty Two, and then they pulled it out mm. after Squadron Forty Two. Yeah, I can see that the Squadron Forty Two ship. Don't yeah. Remember. And and so my my thought is um, I, I'm seriously concerned that what they did was they heard me talk about the fairies and um, <laughs> the fairy ships the the the, the Roro fairy and mm -hmm. uh, idea and someone said didn't we have something like that in the backlog and and it's, yeah we did we really do need a ship like that yeah let's pull Whip that it old, out old boys wow. let's let's take this whole thing and, and see if we can can't update this you know. Um, this so was like, oh god! This <laughs> Which is an again, official Astro Pub conspiracy theory. This is an official Astro Pub conspiracy theory. CIG like watches it, like my it. watches my content, pulled an old concept out because they they they, they liked my my the, the cut of my jib. <laughs> um, <laughs> if, 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 if talking conspiracy theories, I, I have one of my own. Uh, a few months back, so did thing that a show for uh, about Pedro Camacho, the, the composer of uh, Star Citizen. And what do you know? Behold, like three weeks later, they have him on Star Citizen Live. So yeah. at one of the bar citizens, I asked uh, Jared, 
uh, straight up. It's like, did you bring him on just because you, we had him on 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 we had, we did a show about him on Soul Citizen? And he said, and he said, yes, I I give you credit for that one. So now we did a show about the Benny Mercer man four weeks ago. So I'm gonna take credit for the, for this one too. Yes, well, you are one of the two official Star Citizen ambassadors that exists. So mm-hmm. like 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 brand ambassadors, it's Fast Cart and Captain Richard. So yep, um, <laughs> there we go. Hey, that's good company. I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, yeah, yeah. The Liberator. I think I uh, the one thing I'll say about the Liberator. And I think we've actually talked a lot. So because I'm I'm losing track of time now. So I we've we're having a good conversations, which is why this is a good thing. But uh, we'll we'll move on from here to the to the um uh to the questions yeah. and answers sections after this. But uh, I think the Liberator is undercosted for what it will do. I also think it'll grow a little bit. The only thing mm-hmm. I would the only notes I would give CIG on this one would be bunks. You need bunks. You need places for mm-hmm. those those soldiers to sleep because that's mm-hmm. going to be a long it's trip. Only a, take a one or two, three people are crew though. That's I know. Got, no, no, but but it carries what? How many people is this? Like sixteen or yeah, it has sixteen it, jump seats. Sixteen then, jump yeah. seats. So you need mm-hmm. at least sixteen uh, beds for that crew. Even uh, maybe mm-hmm. let's say half of it because you're hot. At least bunking, eight. So they can sleep. Eight. They can sleep in their ship. Mm-hmm. They can sleep in their ships. But it's no, not really designed for ships. You can't log out. You can't log out in your ships. Yeah, you got to be able to log out in it. In, inside the ship because you also because it's supposed to carry like ground troops and if it's a long journey mm-hmm. like I don't know many it, it's I know it's supposed to be based off of the um, the LCAC the the hovercraft that the Marines use to carry big big mm-hmm. um, big tanks into battle right. but um uh, it's it's really more of a hybrid of the landing um, helicopter dock or the helicopter landing dock or whatever the LHD and the LCAC um it's a little bit of both. And if you're gonna new, if you're gonna if you're gonna do that um, that combo, you need to have a place where people can log out because that long journey from one system to another, someone may be able to hop onto the ship and then just be like, "Listen, I got a meeting. It's gonna be, be about thirty minutes, and you, it's gonna take us about thirty minutes to even get into system. I'm gonna mm. hit. The, I'm gonna sleep in the bed. I'll log out and I'll come back in. You know, when the meeting's over with. Um, and you want be able people to come be able to log in, come in, log in." hit in the bed, go log, uh, log in the bed and then have another crew f- like transport these people to the, where they're going. Then they log in where they get, yeah. when they get there, pop out of the bed. Cause this is like a multi-person group, you know, it's, it's, it's a ferry, you know, it's a ferry, but it's long-term. So making, having beds makes sense. Yeah. Um, and that's something I think somebody in, in chat might've missed that. I said, should, should the Valk have 20 more beds, but the Valk doesn't transport ships. So it won't need yeah. that. No, mm-hmm. yeah, the Valk doesn't really need to because it it is one of those things that gets to it drop hot drops troops into a combat zone. It's right. not really a carrier. It would be mm-hmm. carried on like I'd see a Valk on a Liberator. I know I don't know yeah. the logistics of that, but it, you could probably make it fit. You can probably wiggle <laughs> it in to make it fit. Get yourself some extra jump seats. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, because uh, I could I could see people being transported on the 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 Liberator getting out. Evaing up to the top deck or getting up to the top deck, getting into the Liberator, into the Valkyrie, and then locking it up. The Valkyrie goes in first, and then the the, the Liberator goes in next. You know. Mm. So, do you think that the game is going to change to make this a really important type of ship? You think it's going to get more expensive and be more important? Do you think these are yes. ships that we're going to be seeing pretty regularly? Yes. Being used? I, th- I think this these are the ships are going to be absolutely essential for most basic gameplay, at least for NPCs, if not players. Because this is the kind of ship that if once you get multiple systems in place, you need a way to transport goods, people, ships, and vehicles from point A to point B. And mm-hmm. the ships that are in the game right now don't really fit that role. The closest you have are things like the uh, the Hercules, the Kraken, the Idris. And none of those are really designed for transporting large numbers of groups and ships. Mm-hmm. But the the Liberator is. It's designed to carry. It has five separate landing bays, and with the fits it sits rule, you could just shove stuff in there. You could probably fit multiple. Um, you know, probably fit twenty to thirty cyclones in that thing. Um, plus cargo. Plus you know. So it, it, it it's almost like a um, a merchant marine. 
It almost looks mm. like a, it almost feels like a merchant marine mm-hmm. ship. It's designed to mm-hmm. carry large amounts of cargo and people to locations, and it's military in design, but can also be civilian civilianized. Um, I'd expect something like this to be in every org, every org to have one of these, and the, it wouldn't be a necessary an individual ship, but because it has such flexibility and utility, I expect to see these frequently, just all over the place. So my prediction is that this ship is probably gonna a lot of use when when this game goes live because people are gonna be spawning in, in areas that they don't want they they check out and decide they, they don't want to live in, so they're gonna need some way to carry all their ships from one location to, to, to the next, but then it, 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 they're used for just drop off and, and peter a bit. But I think it'll be, it'll be see heavy use at the, at the beginning of the, of the game. That's why I'm, I'm, I was tempt, I was contemplating getting one, but it's, it's so limited, limited for me that it just wouldn't be worth it. But I probably that um, we went one from, 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 from a friend or something like that. Yeah, it's, I don't necessarily think I'll own one, but I wouldn't be surprised if I used it, used one a lot. If I if I right. know somebody who's going to make that route, you know, and be exactly. like, I'm going to pop this my, is the kind my of ship. on, you know, on, on it seems and like, just get you get to where we're going. Mm-hmm. It seems like the kind of ship I'd want to know somebody who has one, but maybe yeah. not mm-hmm. one myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Like, it's not necessarily a ship you want, but it's someone's always going to want to know one. There's someone's going to want to mm-hmm. know a Liberator mm-hmm. owner. Someone's yeah. always going to want to yeah. know a Liberator owner. So it's like the truck. Yeah. yeah. Everyone wants to know a truck. A guy yeah. with a truck. You know, everyone's gonna ask about the moving. It's it is literally that. It is the yeah. the guy with a truck ship uh, <laughs> when you're moving. Yeah. <laughs> it's fair. We needed one. Couldn't have been yeah. the Nomad. Everybody's like, Nomad's the pickup truck. Can't put anything in there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, some, um, go ahead. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna call it for now, and we're gonna move into the question and answer because oh. I gotta use the restroom and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. thank you all for for joining us so far. We're gonna move into the question and answer section. We have so so far raised. Um, uh, one thousand one hundred. Okay, one thousand one hundred ninety-three dollars and sixty-one cents. Um, because we've got uh, Captain Legion donated twenty dollars, who said, "All hail the Redeemer," and then Yinzir uh, donated thirteen dollars and sixty-one cents. Obligatory Redeemer troll, uh, troll for Pete. <laughs> God. Nice. Uh, all right, but thank By you way, so much. The the, the logo is so cool with the, the table. I love it. Mm, yeah, table? I just saw that. It's very cool. Yeah. Thank, thank Dar. This whole thing is Darge. Darge. You okay. know, I, I asked Darge to help me out with this six months ago, and we spent the last couple of months back, back and forth, and eventually the last week or so, he came together and put this in there, so to this make it all good. work. So, good job, yeah. Darge. Yeah. Thank you again. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We're going to use. Uh, I'm going to use the restroom and grab some more to drink. You feel free to get up and move around if you need to, uh, and we'll get to the question and answers. So. Let me uh, pop that back up. <laughs> 